Huh? You mean? Huh? I, 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 snap, hey, I snatched some socks off a nigga out there in the hall. I said, hey, you got on black socks, cuz. Let me get them socks. Yo, yo, real talk. He walked up with somebody in the work at bar and said, yo, man, I need some black socks. Let me take them joints off of <laughs> I said, hey, you know what I said? I, I had to get the socks first. I said, hey, bro, if you ever went to jail, man, you're going to get shucked up for all your shit. He was like, oh, I'll give you my socks. That's way too easy. I got on that. Hey, man, you got your pocket, dude. <laughs> okay, man, I came up here to do an interview, and I didn't even know where the fuck I was going. Though I go up in there, man, it's Gilly, and, and man, I'm like, wait, hold on. So I'm just, I got to change my outfit, and I, I look like I got on some red carpet slappers. I'm about to, man, I'm talking to the hood, baby. I can't be in the hood looking like Great Gatsby right now, you know what I'm saying? And, and I need your socks. You need my socks. I need your black socks. All right, well, you go. Please. Oh man, I'm serious. Sure. I'm I need. Sweaty. I'm serious, man. I need. I'm gonna flip them inside out. Let's go. That's some nasty. Oh. But you don't want to see my feet on camera. All right. This some real. Listen. This is what would happen if you ever went to jail. You'd be giving up all kinds of shit. <laughs> Get your socks. Hey. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Hey, when y'all watch this interview, I'm putting this whole outfit on right here. Y'all just saved my life. You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. We got a legend today. Yes. You got a legend. Yes. The first time I saw my brother, he was on the bus singing, man. He was on the bus singing, man. I mean, soda commercial, man. He just, that was the first time I seen him. And then after that, he just came through all types of legendary tunes, just doing his thing, cracked through. Won't you be you know I mean? my? Some of y'all first time y'all seen him was Fast and Furious. Y'all ain't never about what he did. I'm saying young out here, man. They, they, they ain't tap in until till Roman appears. They ain't tap into. They don't know about Jody. You got I some mean, food in there. <laughs> 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 and Bing choked him all out. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, wait, wait, wait. You got to talk about no choke, man. Listen, I was acting. <laughs> see, see, listen, listen. Acting, man, I'm like, like, I was Hold shook on. from that joint. I was like, damn, because you know what was so real about that? You know what's so real about that? I had a dude that my mom used to talk to back in the day, and we wasn't we. It was, yeah. And everybody know that story. I wasn't yeah, feeling yeah, yeah, yeah. it. What did it all? Because you you'll find a reason. If it, you know, you might your mom might talk to certain dudes, and you might feel one or two. And if he ain't around no more, you ain't feeling nobody else. Right. Cause that y'all might have that connection, like a father son connection, even though he ain't your dad. But then you had a dude to just like disrespect. Like bro, you ain't you ain't running this joint. This is right. my mom's but, joint. But man. moms moms in most cases be letting them. Do all that <laughs> yeah. Shit. Cause I'm telling you one thing yeah. that that supersede everything. everything. Yeah, yeah. When he well, come I, in and put that dead mouse on. <laughs> well, you know what I'm gonna say is what I'm gonna say is lonely for a lot of these single mothers and them them missing that that alpha presence in any capacity in their mm -hmm. house while they it's hard for a mother to raise boys it's mm -hmm. much easier for a mother to raise girls but even that's challenging because women girls and teenage girls be the most disrespectful towards their mothers ever they be arguing mm -hmm. back well, you man. know it's like it's always that component like daddy's little girl is not a concept that just came out of the sky daddy's little girl is because there's a lot of people out here that say, F my mama, I love my daddy more, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay? Because it's that it's that conflict. And so same thing with us, as as young boys that become adolescent and teenagers, that young adults into men, we are always struggling with, you know, territory, environment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and so a lot of times these single mothers be so desperate uh, and that ain't for everybody, you know, everybody, nobody wants to be alone, but a lot of times they be so desperate and thirsty to get something at the house, as soon as they get them, they get that permission to run the whole shit. Mm -hmm. say whatever you want to them kid, mm -hmm. treat them however way you want, this and that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And if they try and come at me about anything that you did or you said to them, I'm gonna f them up to make sure that you don't go nowhere. Right. And that's yeah. the house I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy and because- My all mama rest in peace, but I was not acting in Baby Boy. King Rames definitely triggered the shit. I don't like the n to this day. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's my OG. <laughs> hey, I swear to God, y'all think I'm playing. I run into that n to this day, bro. I don't give a fuck where we at, you what clothes we got on, what we doing, what he been. It could be the Golden Globes. I see that n across the room. I be like, man, f that n right there. <laughs> <laughs>
No, I thought y'all was acting. That nigga, I thought y'all was acting. I thought y'all was acting. Hey, I, hey, f- that. I guess the truth just came up. How about who? That nigga. So that thing triggered you. It triggered you. Triggered me like a mother. Just like you just finished talking about, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you lucky that one of the niggas your mama dated you was cool with. I wasn't f- with none of them, yeah. man. none of them. They came up in my crib, man. I, I was like, man, what the f- is this? And I wasn't a video game, nigga. like yeah. all the extra sh- yeah. that Jody was doing, yeah. that was movie, right? Yeah. I didn't have no kids at yeah. the time, yeah. none of that. But yeah, bro. Like, yeah, baby boy was my life. That was not acting. I, that John Singleton, rest in peace to the big homie. That just had to turn that camera on. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna tell you, it was crazy. This is some shit that nobody would know. While we was on the set, and we got into that fight scene, right? I know everybody you was joking about the choke and all that. That shit was Legendary. classic. That's classic. <laughs> Say something else, little choke. I'll be here and random say that shit to me the year. You I ain't been choked yet. Uh, <laughs> but I, I do I do wanna say that uh <laughs> you having way too much fun with this shit. You just wanna get on the plane. I choke you, just No, 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 it ain't like that. It ain't, it ain't like that. <laughs> I, I you know the crazy thing is I actually the, the the joke is about the choke, but it ain't no n- ever tried to, you know, in nowhere. And I don't even hear anything about the choke. It's like, hey man, this shit was funny as hell with this <laughs> choke. You know? yeah. It's more so like yeah. that. But I will say that the running joke is, hey man, you got something to eat up in there? We hungry. Yeah. That's yeah. what you just said. What? That's where I hear everywhere I go. I could be in an arena, walking through an airport, it'd be a ramp. Hey man, you hungry? I'd be yeah. like, oh, here we go with this <laughs> shit, man. Yeah, I got a mask on yeah. and I know who I am yelling out hungry joke. Yeah. Anyway, back to my story. I was saying that John Singleton knew. First of all, he wrote the movie for Pac. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, rest in peace. He wrote Baby Boy, Jody was Tupac. So when Pac got killed in Vegas in 96, years, I don't know how many years, over 10 years went by. And John was like, if I, if I go and make this movie, he told me, I, you know, I feel like I'm gonna disrespect Pac because it's like a custom suit. Like I wrote this movie for Pac. They did Poetic Justice. Mm-hmm. They was the best of friends. They talked, they linked up all the time. Like, you know, there's a lot of niggas out here with they goofy Pac stories, but you can look up on YouTube right now Find another nigga that was doing sprint and running contests up the street with my Tupac. Nigga, John Singleton and Pac were like best of friends, super close. So he felt the way, obviously, about Pac being killed, but he was really like, I wrote Jody and this entire baby boy movie for Pac, which is why the whole mural was in my bedroom mm-hmm. uh, of Pac. Yeah. So fast forward, we in the middle of the living room doing the scene. And my mama name is Priscilla, rest in peace. And this is my first movie, right? So we dealing with Taraji, and this is, you know, she acted before, but I'm the only on the set who have never acted in my life. I'm, I'm Mrs. I'm sweet lady lately. Mm-hmm. I'm out here, with pure vaginal activity. They give a about Hollywood, movie sets, none of this. Whatever the fuck that is, that's the furthest thing from any of my plans. Mm-hmm. So, I'm not reading scripts, I'm not doing no acting classes, nothing about that world was anything of any interest to me at the time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I'm on the set, and if you got John Singleton, pressure, Ving Rhames with all of his experience, pressure, mm-hmm. Taraji is new, but this is her breakout role, mm-hmm. pressure, mm-hmm. she's more experienced than yeah. me. Um, I'm new, nigga. I didn't know what POV meant, point of view. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what INT, interior, versus your mom, EXT, your mom was also exterior. Experience. She also had experience. She's experienced, yeah, went to Spellman, she that. a legend. So I'm on the set green as a mother. I'm like, nigga, y'all got it raining outside in the middle of the night, this rain machine, he don't want me no more. That was all rain machine. I'm outside like, what the fuck? 
is I'm this all new. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he John Singleton knew my mama's name. And John knew that other than Pac, who he wrote it for, and they said, you the only that remind me of Pac. He the only that's alpha, strong, outspoken, vocal, born and raised on some street shit, like from Watts for real. Like you ain't an implant, you ain't grow up in the suburbs, right. fell on a hard time, moved to the hood. Right. I was born and raised at Martin Luther King Hospital. I ain't out here super cribbing, blooding. Right. I ain't sold no dope. Y'all other out here painting a different picture. I'm a real hood that can make a fall, uh -huh. can make a call and f your life up. Uh -huh. And 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 that's that's that capacity. Like you go out here and do what you do. Right. We do this hood 24 hours, seven days a week. Now, if you ever need something, we got you. Uh -huh. That's my life. Right. So John Singleton was like, you the only that remind me of Pac. Everybody out here want to be Pac. They getting tattoos trying to become Pac. They out here trying to rap and sound like Pac. Mm -hmm. They trying to be super thug like Pac. They getting Pac tattoos. They doing whatever. Mm -hmm. You the only that remind me. You know who else said it? Pac's mama, mm -hmm. who became the godmother to my daughter at the time. Mm -hmm. Rest in peace to Afeni. Uh, so, so I'm in the living room and we doing this scene. John Singleton knew my mama name and he knew that, that, that this whole thing about being a baby boy and being in conflict with stepfathers and all that was my actual life. Mm -hmm. So I was in the middle of a scene struggling to get angry mm -hmm. while I was doing a scene. This is when the whole fight broke out in the living room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slapped me, threw me over the table and all mm -hmm. that and I'm screaming and yelling and all that shit. And my mama's like, you leave him alone, all that, that whole scene. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. I could not find, as an actor. Mm -hmm. And then, that off camera, he said, I'm gonna tell you the problem. You want your mama to be your woman, but this is my woman. Priscilla is my girl. Oh, no. So, 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 John told Ving the name. He told Ving Rains what my mama's name was, bro, while the oh. camera was rolling on me. Mm. So all she wrote. Mm. What the greatest act <laughs> out. Hey, you say Priscilla name on camera, nigga, Denzel coming out. <laughs> <laughs> hey. He comes, he got you. Oh, me. Hey, straight up, nigga. I swear to God, I stood up, and I'm gonna tell you when he said it. When the nigga said, uh, that nigga said that, you know, you know, we all, we all hood, man. We try our best. I tell y'all, I'm naturally not a nice person. Uh, I work heavy. I, I work hard every single day to to tap into good vibrations and energy. But the hood, man, the hood will f you up. The hood will be like, nigga, you you can have all the teeth in your mouth. You could be out here charming, cracking jokes. The hood will. F you up and uh -huh. make you become them uh, -huh. uh because that's the only way to survive so this through my mama's name out there and i'm you know i grew up in all crib hood i ain't never been a crip in my life but i grew up in all crib hood and when that said priscilla i said uh this is when i stood up in the scene and i was like cuz i got heat from like you when i walked up on him <laughs> like that yeah. that's when he said priscilla yeah and, and he just cut the priscilla out he cut the priscilla out because yeah. that was all camp yeah, it was off camera. So he, yeah. he yelled out that, and I walked up on that nigga. I was like, mm, he from like you. And I was standing there in his face, and that was the dialogue and the scene and the moment that happened after. And the thing is, I was so mad about this mentioning my mama's name, he did the shit multiple takes. Mm. He only mm. had to say my mama's name once. Mm. But we did that scene multiple takes mm. because he had to shoot different angles and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. But yeah, man, that nigga said my mama name, boy, he took me back. <laughs> but he got the best out of you. <laughs> he said my mama name, boy. But boy. <laughs> you hey. say what? <laughs> hey, you funny, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like said, he got the best name, out man. of you, though. You wanted me, you wanted me to tap my, you wanted that mother Denzel to come out. You say, for so? Put, put a F in front of it, nigga. For so? <laughs> Said, what? said Priscilla name on that boy. God, boy, I tell you, it was crack. You just had the roll camera. That was it.
I got heat for hey, like hey, you. I got, hey, cuz, I got heat for <laughs> like you. I stepped up. You know what it is. It's like, it's one day to just stand still. When it's, when it's about to crack, you gonna step into that shit, nigga, with the yeah. uh, knuckles was balled up. Boom, I looked at this boy. <laughs> He was ready. He Aye. forgot he was on set. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that said for silver. <laughs> that was a key word. Let me, let me ask you a question, right? Yes, sir. Hey, yeah. by the way, I came in with a totally different outfit, and I hope y'all roll the B-roll footage. Oh, yeah, we putting all that they out. They didn't tell me where I was going, <laughs> and I walked in this <laughs> and I seen this and I seen y'all image up on the wall. I said, I got on the wrong goddamn outfit. He definitely did. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta take this glossy ass right here. This look like a movie premiere. This you had street. your breakfast club fit on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 you know me. I'm leaving that alone. Oh, Charlamagne, yeah, that's our alone. guy. That's our guy, uh, Charlamagne. Uh, yeah, yeah, Charlamagne, he blessed me this morning. Yeah. But guess what? I was banned from the breakfast club. This episode of Me and Osworth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam Vodka. Now, you know the slogan. Life ain't going your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. You caught your woman cheating today. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. You thought that check was coming and it didn't come your way. Shout out New Amsterdam Vodka. It's distilled five times. It's filtered three times for you know what? That clean, crisp finish. You could drink it straight up, on the rocks, juice, soda. Or just make a classic New Amsterdam meal. That's up to you. But when you out and about at your local liquor store, you make sure you scoop you up some of this New Amsterdam vodka. The NAV. Make sure you get you some NAV. ASAP. The official vodka of Barstool Sports. And what are we talking about? I mean, a great time. Great for pre-gaming. Great for, you know, right before the boxing events. You know, whatever you're into. New Amsterdam vodka. Put this in your life. Right? Uh, my interview was at 9.30, but I was banned from the Breakfast Club at least until 9, 9 a.m. Envy wasn't having it. Wow. We we chopped it up. We talked. We chopped it up. Yeah. Yeah. We had that conversation. But me and me and me and uh me and Charlemagne was working on that Breakfast Club interview for the last two, three days, and, and Envy was not having it. Wow, because all oh, because he, you helped him and his wife, man. No, no, no. We're not he even gonna go that. there. We we he, he wasn't having it because because of the way everything went down, you know what I mean? It ain't about, at this point, I'm not being politically correct. It ain't about who's at fault, who said what, who did. We already addressed it. Right. If y'all want to know what happened, have fun, look it up. Point is, I said to Charlemagne last night, I said, bro, listen, uh, you do understand that this platform don't belong to you. You do understand that Every black man that witnessed what happened to your your, your young king, uh -huh. absolutely, rest in peace to rest him. Peace. I, I meant to start the interview off with Thank that, you, like, bro, I like, that. I every real out here right. felt you all the way. Thank you. But what you did, what you did, uh -huh. black man, is oh God, give me the words. What you did, what your loss. Uh -huh. And the choices that we all know you could have made, because uh -huh. we we know who did it. It was difficult. <laughs> we know who did it. We know uh -huh. who's involved. We know who did what. Uh -huh. I don't know. You know. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what happens. They hood give you the uh -huh. intel. Absolutely. So we know God did a number on you. Uh -huh. We know God showed up and said, "There's some choices that you uh -huh. instinctively want to make, should uh -huh. make." Uh -huh. <laughs> And we not doing that. Mm -hmm. And every real period, I don't give a f what what side you from. I don't give a f from Brooklyn to Philly to jail doing twenty. Will never see another day. Everybody know what choice you could have made, my nigga. Mm -hmm. Everybody, mm -hmm. real real hood. Proud of you, black man. Thank you, brother. And may God rest his soul. And I don't care. I'll, five, ten years from now, it's 
always going to be a hole in your heart. And I don't even know what that is. I lost my mom. I didn't lost a lot of real I grew up with. I ain't never buried a child. And, and God bless you, bro. Thank Every you, bro. 24 hours is what my therapist, as I've been dealing with losing John Singleton and Paul Walker and my mom and my mama died on Valentine's Day. If she gave birth to an R&B singer, you gonna die on Valentine's? Bruh, and we don't need to compare notes. I think the worst thing y'all can do is compare notes. A loss is a loss. Mm -hmm. But bruh, the choices you could have made, mm -hmm. it was what difficult. you could have arranged. It was difficult. Cause you could have made, the line you could have pushed. It was difficult. Real no. But, but. You, you're the, using the, this stage and this platform the right way, bro. God had had me at a certain point in my life God. by that time. Crazy God. It would have, it would have offset what I'm doing now. Damn. You know what I mean? Because you understood. But you're trying to, trying to keep the youth out of prison. There you go. And out of them graveyards. That's what I'm saying. So. You, without, I've never talked to you about this, right? No, no, I don't no. want anybody to think that's rolling that we don't even have each other's number, right? No. All right. I don't got your number either, right? We ain't had no pre-interview. We just flowing. Listen, real, real hood is, is, is spoken and unspoken. You ain't got to walk into any room, any club, any environment, no airport. I don't give a f You could be in Wall Street, the whitest white boardroom ever. If a hood walk in, you're going to know off top. Every period who's seen that all go down in real time, that trauma, that loss on that level, there's so many choices that we all know you could have made. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm looking you in your face as a black man and telling you how proud of you I am. Appreciate that, brother. Because I don't know you personally, mm -hmm. but I know as a hood, because mm -hmm. we all from that place, mm -hmm. there's some calls that could have been made Mm -hmm. You ain't even had to do it, cause see, when you when you really, <laughs> when you really about that life, man. <laughs> you, you, you know, your hands don't get dirty, baby. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, you might you might be able to rub your ear and wink, man, and the sniper just. <laughs> 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 it's like you know, hey, yeah, hey, hey, hey. I know y'all know what I'm though. talking about. Hey, 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 hey the most charming, charismatic ever, born and raised in the hood. They shake your mother's hand. And you won't even be able to put two and two together that the reason that you didn't, you will never see another birthday happen from that handshake in Valet Park. Mm -hmm. Shake your hand, be like, all right, nigga, all right, good to see you, boy. Uh, all right, baby. All right, that, <laughs> hey, you crazy. Hey, <laughs> rub that nose right there. <laughs> I'm at the crib, nigga. Hey, and when a nigga call me with the news, I'm going to be like, say what? Oh man. Man, you lying. <laughs> you playing. Man, they ain't did that. Hey, man. them ain't ran up in your house, man. <laughs> you showing up to check on the <laughs> house that got ran through and you the nigga that arranged it. Uh, Just put that 70 inch up. Nigga, go see that. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Now, now, I want to get into something. Right. Hey, when you get the 70 inch, get the Apple TV. Attached in the back. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this. <laughs> Watch everything. Everything. <laughs> it's like, you know, a lot of people know you. Yep. For an extraordinary franchise that you're a part of. Mm. Fast and Furious. How did that come about? John Singleton. We did Baby Boy first. My second movie ever was Fast and the Furious. How do you go? Like, how was it? Like, then you walking into that, knowing that you basically the first one you freestyle, the first movie you freestyle. Boy, I've been freestyling it for thirty years, my brother. Well, how do you explain that? My life, my whole career felt like a rental car. Like at some point, I got to give it back. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like that. I'm, I'm not talking about like this. Ain't no fake humble. Shit. I'm yeah. talking about like. If you're in disbelief about my life, not you, but if people are looking at my life and my career and like, oh, he started off with the Coke commercial and man, 10 billion in box office, man, the sweet lady, the arena sold out, you know, he's still, he's still, man, I can't believe I'm still, man. My, my, listen, y'all had five minutes of fame. My shit was 30 seconds. I'm, I'm almost at 30 years, man. Like, come on, man. God's got his hands on me so crazy. Every day feels like Christmas, man. Can't believe I'm here. Like, bro, I've been looking at y'all for years on TV. I'm, I'm still, I still allow myself to be starstruck. 
Uh, we do too. You know what I mean? Like, you, it's like uh, you know, <laughs> the goal is to never allow yourself to get too familiar mm -hmm. with how blessed you are. Mm -hmm. This all, all continue to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like, my stomach <laughs> touching my back. Every form of public aid, WIC vouchers, county checks. My mama made us go to a social security building and play retarded. <laughs> to get that check. $780. Straight up. Government cheese, hey, nigga. You been acting. <laughs> that was, that was, was my first acting gig. Your mom was your first director. She gave you your first movie gig. Your mom, first director. Ah, ah. <laughs> That was my first acting gig. Yeah. That was the first acting gig. Hey man, they laughing off. Your mom, your mom gave you. Why you laughing so goddamn hard, man? Hey, your mom gave you. His face ran over. He laughing hey, off. Rest in peace to the legend. <laughs> <laughs> Put your mom on the stage. 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 Put your mom on she gone. <laughs> out of here, government. Yeah. <laughs> we we passed the window of opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> me and my brother went and got that. Me. So my mama said, Mama said, now this is I said, Mama, what is now? I'm like eight years old. Nigga. She said, This is what we gonna do. She said, We we gotta go into this county building and 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 you know, if y'all end up doing this, we gonna get seven hundred and sixty dollars a month. And your mama could use this, you know. I'm here, we in the hood. I, I'm working and trying to keep up. It's for y'all, you know. You got your two sisters, your brother, and, and so if if y'all do this, then this is how much money your mama gonna get. Is it a piece, with. or was just for all y'all? Was it seven hundred seven dollars a piece? It was seven hundred and sixty-two dollars a piece. Ooh. Yeah, go ahead. And I, I don't. I don't, I don't <laughs> this back in the day, that was a lot of scratch for mama. The walked in there. The piece was like, go ahead. Yo, what happened? Shit. <laughs> what happened, man? I want to know this. Well, <laughs> walking in with speed coming. Fuck it. I went here to lecture. Your mom gave you. Hey, you stupid as a mother. Hey, what's how that lecture go? How that lecture go? <laughs> so, so. Hey, man. Let me tell my goddamn story. Hey, man. How that lecture Yo, this, go? This comedy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. Mom said, when we get up in here, uh, she said, delay your answers. <laughs> Mama was gangster, dude. Mm -hmm. so Mama gonna get this money, uh -huh. <laughs> She said, delay your answers. I said, I said, what does that mean? She said, well, if I ask you a question, uh, you would respond, right? I said, yeah. She said, well, I might ask you a question. What color is the wall? I said, white. She said, don't do that. She said, if they ask you what color is the wall, act like you thinking about it, look at the wall, and then, then say, white. But delay it, make it, you know, she, she didn't like totally unpack. She didn't say play retarded. She didn't say use them words, but she was just basically like, we gotta go up in here and make them believe y'all slow that that y'all got some issues. Uh and and then she said, whatever they ask you to do, whatever test they give you, I don't know what they gonna give you, but whatever test they give you, purposely act like you can't pass the test. And I'm smart. At eight years old now, I was sharp as a f I've always been an A student. Mm -hmm. I'm a hood, but I've I've always been a communicator and always been smart. I ain't never had no problems. I have behavioral problems. I've always wanted to attend, I've always been the class clown. I ain't never been no dumb, right? So, so mom said, do that, do that. So then the lady came in, white lady came in, she pulled out a puzzle and she's talking to me like I'm slow. She's like, hi, blah, blah, blah. And then she says, um, okay, so listen, I'm gonna put a puzzle in front of you. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like this, I'm staring at it ain't there, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm in, nigga. You know, I gotta get this money for mama. You like, I'm gonna get mama this money. Y'all two is crazy. Y'all crazy. <laughs> Sorry. Y'all crazy. 
I'm sorry, <laughs> man. This shit that people got to go through just to make it in life. Yeah. <laughs> just to eat. Just to eat, nigga. Just to eat. It's real. I'm so sorry, hey, these man. white people out of the camera like, man. That's <laughs> real. Hey, being in this black skin is real as well. Anyway, so she says, I'm going to put a puzzle in front of you. She put the puzzle there. <laughs> it says, it's a puzzle of a human being. <laughs> Said, <laughs> like, you don't know what a human being is. <laughs> she talking to me like, I'm out of here. Yeah. Like, like my name is Pookie. Okay, yeah. I'm out of this. <laughs> you don't know what's going on. <laughs> of Oh, crazy. He's got cheese. Yeah. <laughs> 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 man on his tear. Like. Uh, so, so she put shit, the crazy. puzzle in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's full on like, I'm going to put this in front of you. Okay, and I'm sitting there, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> staring off of his face. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You're looking all over the place. <laughs> So, so she she put the puzzle and then I remember she took the lid off the puzzle and then she put all the pieces of the puzzle and had them to fall all over the place and then she started scrambling them like domino you know what I mean she hit a nigga with the you know what I mean like I'm not gonna even you know hopefully hopefully I ain't gotta give you this goddamn money cause you ain't gonna know where the, f the legs and the arms and none of this shit go so she hit a nigga with the scrabble and then she says now do me a favor and put the puzzle together. So I looked, my mama directed me, okay? My mama's my original director. So I said, okay, I'm looking. If you my mom, right, I, I, I'm full on. They got eight years old, I go. She's like, go ahead, babe. I'm like, okay. This is the leg. This is the head. This is the head, right? <laughs> I can't believe it. I know what he read too. <laughs> this is the head, right? So these are legs, now. okay? Look at my mom again. And then I go. The leg right next to the head. Leg coming out the goddamn <laughs> head. <laughs> Damn. That <laughs> said, sit up, got six feet. <laughs> $716 sold! But what, but what about what about your sister? Your, 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 your brothers? Man. What about the rest? Did they get it? Oh yeah, no. I, I don't think, I don't think, I don't remember. I don't remember pulling. Both I'm sorry. I don't remember both of my sisters doing it. Me and my brother definitely did. Yeah, she like, they, 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 like, you. Yeah, she might, my mama might have been taught, and I don't know. Now, I wasn't a part of that conversation, nor was I old enough to understand. All I can tell you is, I don't think that the, 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 the Social Security building would have been able to believe it for y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she like, I got, <laughs> ain't no way you gave birth to four out here on and the you spectrum. you straight, mom. And you straight. Right. So we could get away with two. Right. And, and so me and my brother went up and then we got that. But anyway, um, yeah, man, heads was coming out, the legs were coming out the head, my fucking uh, arms was coming out the stomach. I fucked that puzzle up. Let, let me ask you this question. Yeah. When you was what you was on the internet, you was just being a human being, and you was just talking about some issues you was going through. You talking about the crying video? And you said. What do you want me to do? No, no, no. What more do you what want from me? What more do you want from me? And congratulations. Did, did you ever think that sh was going to be like I did not know I filmed myself. I yeah. did not know I uploaded the video. Yeah. And I didn't know that the video was out there for almost four months. Okay, I was stressed out because I woke up to some accusations. Yeah. And they sent me in to a therapist and a psychiatrist, and they literally gave me some psych med. I don't to this day. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Yeah. I've never had a drink in my life. Yeah. Red wine, white wine, a beer, nothing. Yeah. I don't smoke. I don't drink or smoke. Molly life. X perk. I don't give a f who y'all. What it is? I ain't never f with nothing. Yeah. Ever. I don't smoke weed. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So you put anything in my system, it's so gonna yeah. have like I, I I I get high off of. Smoking weed in the studio set. I'll be on the couch like this. <laughs> Five minutes. It could be the weakest dirt weed all the way up to this chemical weed y'all out here smoking yeah. with goddamn 50 goddamn chemicals in it. You put anything in the air, nigga. 
I'm out. You done? Yeah, because I'm, I, you know, I don't, that ain't my world. So they put some psych meds in my system for the first time ever. And man, I filmed myself. I uploaded that video. That video was out there. The memes, the jokes, and all. I had no idea that none of that shit was going on. Yeah. Cause I was literally out of my mind. I was gone, bro. Yeah. And so, yeah, it it, it it was funny. I think if it wasn't me, um, I would have been trolling me. I'd have posted that video of another doing that. But it, it was <laughs> it was it was crazy as a mother. Uh, to, to, to have that in my system, be out of my mind, literally, have that to be the darkest, most embarrassing thing ever. And then going back to you. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by PFL, the Professional Fighters League. Bellator Champion Series, San Diego goes down Saturday, September 7th, live on Max. The card features a lightweight title between Usman Nurmagomedov and Alexander Shabley. Usman looks to build on the legacy of his cousin Khabib. Don't miss the action. Saturday, September 7th at 8 p.m. on Max. For those looking to attend in person, tickets are available on AXS.com. So if you're looking to be in the building in San Diego, the tickets are on AXS xs.com and this is this will be one hell of a fight we already know we all know that bellator puts on some of the best mma bouts that you can possibly see so from the bellator champion series do not forget it's going down september 7th saturday live on max tune in and if you want to be in the building let's not forget Get your tickets on AXS.com, Saturday, 8 p.m. on Max. Tune in. Right. That realization that God's got his hands on. Mm -hmm. Well, now, it's, me, it's supposed to be over after that. God's like when I seen you. it, though, to yeah. me, it didn't come off like it was embarrassing. It just came off like... It was a person that was going through something. He yeah, was pouring that's, his that's, heart out. That's because you're a father. And, and, and you're a, then... You're, it's, it's just crazy how, how our culture is that you could take somebody pouring their heart out being on some human. real you human can't be human shit. in our culture. Yeah. Just yeah. being human, like. Yeah, but think about it. Pouring your heart out is true. It's truth. They not used to seeing me right. do no shit like that. Right. They not used to seeing you cry. They not used to seeing you cry. Mm -hmm. They used to seeing us the way they used to be seeing tough. us. We, we, we together, we hood, we this, we that. Anything about vulnerabilities feels weak, yep. smell weak. It, it, you know, it's like it's a, it's the reason why black men don't go to therapy because if you scared, go to church. So I know they normalizing mm -hmm. the dialogue around mental health and mental health awareness, but we've been out here fucked up forever. Now, you think it's easy to go to school on Wednesday, be playing basketball with your, and then on Thursday you trying to do a car wash and fundraiser to raise some money to bury your homie? Like you can't even process what the. That is like it's real sh going on out here, and then man up, man don't cry, men don't cry, this and that. Then I, the only thing about that video, this is me. I was I was mental health awareness before y'all made it cool, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I I'm like everybody else, fly handsome out here knocking down every bad on human feet. Mm. That's a hell of a line on human feet. Yes, sir. And, and been at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Human feet. He liked that lot. <laughs> it's real. Vaginal activity, endless. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Only reason I ain't knock your head down because I didn't go out last night. Damn, he told somebody went home with something because I ain't show up. I wasn't there. She had to do something. <laughs> that would have been me getting domed out, man. Not you. Fuck oh you my man. god. Fuck you, man. Fuck you was nice in my hotel. That would have been me. That would have been my work last night. Man. Hey, I, I, I ain't want to go out last night. I ain't want to go out last night. Good for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Anyway, so all I'm saying is us as men. We are uh, black men. 
and men in general, I, I would love to say black, we specifically, uh, we got some different type of shit that we grow up in. I know they love to go Holocaust and make reference to the Holocaust when it comes to the Jewish community. My daughter is Jewish, so I understand the sensitivities of a trauma. We understand the sensitivities of the traumas associated to slavery. Uh -huh. But we live in this every day, bro. We, like, they will never understand, even if you in tears and crying and you go into all of the specifics and details about what it is to be a black man in America, they have no idea. They'll be like, oh man, I'm listening. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't know. But you're gonna be able to leave this conversation, white man, and still be a white man. So your experience in this America is still gonna be through the lens of your skin. We both got the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm man, you man. This here, this different. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you get pulled over, you're not thinking these thoughts. Mm -mm. When, when, when you call 911 for help, you didn't know that it was gonna go from calling for help to you being a n get shot in your kitchen with a, with a pot of hot water. Mm -hmm. You don't know what the fuck this is. We do this every single day, mm -hmm. and for somebody to be able to crack a joke and we smile to this day, what a blessing. For you to wake up in any kind of good mood, when every reason to be in a fucked up mood mm -hmm. is at your door every day. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't understand. Mm -hmm. So, not not y'all, obviously, but I'm talking about like, they don't understand. So, 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 uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's really, <clears throat> it's really special to wake up every single day. I'm 45 years old. Some of y'all I had refused to grow up. <laughs> Turquoise hair, black fingernails, announcing you're homosexual, trying to fit into the in crowd, grown doing TikTok. Grow the f up. It's okay to be a man and say I love and there is no other option for me. It's all right. And guess what? If you out here playing and going big, I'm one of them that also believe in everybody should do what makes them happy. Love who you love, play the way you want to play. Mm -hmm. But y'all out here right now, y'all out here, y'all are at home questioning mm. your man, you questioning your own manhood mm. because of all this shit that's all over Instagram. And you losing track of the confidence that you should be having in who the f you were born to be. Now, if you love who you love and you said, man, I've, I'm a man, I've been with women my whole life and I realize that that's where I want to go, do what makes you happy. Like literally, I've never judged or looked at anybody, they race, they religion, they tax bracket or they, they choice in life. Republican, Democrat, live your life. But you are not about to pressure me into thinking or believing any other version of my life. Mm -hmm. It's good. This, ooh, this shit, <laughs> listen, listen, listen to me. Good warm. Hey, man, listen. Hey, <laughs> moisture. <laughs> Shoot up the club. You know what I mean? Moisture. He going crazy. Now, I got to get into this, man. Moisture. I got to get into this. This is crazy. We got to get into something. That hey, man, I'm so <laughs> Glad I changed my outfit, nigga. Me too. <laughs> this has been a whole other conversation. If I'm sitting here with my mother, gas me on, nigga. It'd have been crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna say this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First and foremost, mm. I want to give a big shout out to the biggest OG, Snoop D O Double G, executive producer, mm. Death Row Films, mm. 1992, mm. uh, with Lionsgate, mm. extraordinary. When I seen that logo, I was so hyped. But tell us about uh, the movie. Man. Now I'm gonna tell you about this movie, mm -hmm. 1992, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna tell you some stuff. And you was a f hell of a father in 1992. When you talk about a black man protecting his son, mm -hmm. we are gonna get to that. And it connected me with OG Bobby Johnson in South Central when he went and got his boy. Mm -hmm. But it was a different thing when he was going to take his boy back. And you know, I'm looking at my man from as I'm watching the movie. I'm looking at my man from, and I and I only re and the greatest role he ever had was in Goodfellas. 
Hmm. Uh, I forget his name. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ray Liotta. You told Ray, Ray Liotta. Ray Liotta. You told Rayola, in Ray Liotta. Rest in peace. You told him. He said, "What you going to do?" He said, you, "You know what the f- I'm going to do." <laughs> gonna you got that blow in your hand. You know what I'm going to do. <laughs> he had your son. That you, now, 1992 was important, and this is why. April 1992. April 29th, April 29th, 1992, the verdict of Rodney King came out. When Rodney King verdict came out, the people from the black community was upset because we seen on tape what happened to him and y'all said that ain't happened to him and the tape they said- killed him and brought him back to life Yeah, all that times. stuff. The tape said this is what happened to him. Y'all try to say it didn't happen to him and y'all let the police walk. After and they, that- And not only did they get off with a not guilty, them white boys knew they was gonna get off and they was in the courtroom smiling and hugging they each other. With a, with a, with, with, they, they all knew what the f- they did. This was prior to cameras being oh, in phones. Yeah, that was the first. Prior to body cams, mm-hmm. prior to cameras even being on police vehicles. Mm-hmm. So somebody rolled out of bed with a camera, big ass camera on the shoulder, nigga, mm-hmm. like this, and filmed this black man getting up. And they was, they was tired. Like, hey man, I'm tired, man. You go ahead. <laughs> they was taking turns. They was Fucking taking shifts. Rodney King up. Having chained up, they was believing him. But whatever the case, so they say not guilty. They South moved Central, the trial. They, Sorry to interrupt. They moved the trial outside sure. of LA. So many of y'all don't know what the fuck we'll is here. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything that's important. LAPD beat the shit out of Rodney King, killed this man, brought him back to life. They had a fun field day. They treated this yeah. man like a fucking yada, waiting on some candy to come out. I don't know what the fuck. And then the trial because it's LAPD, the trial was supposed to be in downtown LA. I'm born and raised there. I'm not an implant that grew up in the valley and then moved to Watts. I'm from Watts, born and raised. So all of this dysfunction, murder, drug, crack cocaine, cripping blood and black Mexican gangs, fighting. What was like, that, what's the name name? I can't forget them. Uh, that, 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 that big time task force for, for the group, it was called, uh, what was the name of that? They used to kick the doors down, run the board doors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You talking, uh, 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 it, I, I, Crash? I, uh, was it? Uh, no, I, I'll think of it a minute. Yeah. They had it in straight out of Compton. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, this is the level of day to day. I'm talking, talking the real hood out right here. Y'all know what the fuck we live every day. So in 1992, April 29th, not to compare traumas, it was an airplane, it was a tragedy. For us, 1992, April 29th, that was our September 11th. Everything burned down. Mm-hmm. And we was fucked up. Prior to 1992, the only time it ever happened on that level was in 1965 for the Watts riots. Mm-hmm. And I was born in Watts. Mm-hmm. So I was born in 78. Mm-hmm. We fresh off of, like when I was born, most of the buildings in my neighborhood hadn't been rebuilt. Yeah. The Watts riots of 1965, the President of the United States had to send Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Mm-hmm. to Watts to get to calm down because they was f***ing everything up oh. because of the same thing. Races, brutality, excessive force, murder, just like we, y'all don't matter, you're disposable, we gonna f*** you up and what are you gonna do right. about it? Uh, and so, we, I was born into that mm-hmm. in 65, born in 78, and now I'm living the shit mm-hmm. in real time. Shit that I've seen and read about and heard about. Anybody that's born and anybody who moved to Minneapolis right now, there's no way you're not gonna feel the energy of George Floyd. Mm-hmm. Would y'all agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Philly has had its tragedies. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter how shiny mm-hmm. the cities and the streets are now. Anybody from Philly, you'll feel the energy. Feel Niggas energy. in Memphis, you feel Still that feel the depression no. of the assassination no, of Dr. Know. King at the Lorraine Motel. It doesn't matter how long ago it was. Anyway, they moved the trial of all these white outside. police officers to Simi Valley. Outside of L.A. Where not one speckle of black culture is because they knew it was going to be a white judge and jury. And it was going to get them officers off. And when it was not guilty, they was laughing and smiling in the courtroom, walking through the parking lot. Hey, man, how do you feel? You got not guilty. Where's my car? <laughs> no surprises here. Not guilty, of course. We're on our way home. Sorry, black guy. Uh, we've done this plenty of times, but this is the first time anybody has filmed it. Uh-huh. Okay? So, 1992, as much as we want the world to think that this movie's about rioting, looting, this movie is about a heist. Yeah, I already know. That platinum. Okay? Rod, Ray Liotta, Scott Eastwood, his son Dylan, mm-hmm. all white boys, all they crazy. 
They said while the whole world well, is distracted going, by September we're gonna, 11, we're going to go take this money. While the whole world is distracted by the riots, the looting, the police brutality, all this breaking in stores, all this trauma happening, we about to go breaking this Amazon warehouse because there's a safe in there with 50 million in platinum bars. Mm -hmm. You know what I know, platinum is worth more than gold, gold. Mm -hmm. in the bars. Mm -hmm. They said we gonna get that. So the movie is a heist. The movie, this is, this is what's crazy. And I know some of y'all gonna be in my comments talking. There has never been a film in the history of South Central movies with this many white people in. This is the South Central LA Fast and the Furious. And you know what's crazy about it? As soon as it start off, when you walk up in that joint, it reminds you of an old dog walk up in the store. And the young boys pull up on you. Mm -hmm. and you Shout like, out to the Hughes, brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shout I out feel to the sorry for your mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What did he say? He, he put that gun out on you. He said, How this feel? You said, Familiar. Yeah, young. Yeah, nephew. Yeah, that was gangster. Like, right. yeah. That was some gangster. That was some gangster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if Neff no, that was some gangster. Neff too young. Neff too young to understand that when you see an old head like that, yeah. he not to be yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He playing in the, the with the That's tape what on I'm the saying. hand. The leave him the f alone, well, young boy. Real, you leave Oak alone. Not a nice person. Cause you thinking, cause Oak ain't popular. He's selling no drugs. They ain't mention his name. He chilling. Oak, Oak is dangerous. Right. And don't nobody else. That's why the other came in the store. Was like, you know who the. That is, yeah. yeah. He'll, he'll, you know, boo, boo, boo. You I can't wait to see that movie. These young niggas don't know who the OGs yeah. are because they at the house chilling, right. great facial yep. heads out there, uh, walking poodles and shit. Drinking their beers uh, and shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big <laughs> stomach gorilla <laughs> telling. <laughs> <laughs> gonna do shit. Yeah. <laughs> old Head was a monster. Old Head, old head was a monster. Old Head used to chase your dad and your uncles. Hey, right, nigga. Old Head is the reason your daddy ain't at home, nigga. They just, Shit. hey, the hood know what they know and ain't told nobody. Old Head used to chase go your dad and your uncles. Go ahead and eat some yeah. pecan pie and leave that motherfucker alone oh. with the gorilla. <laughs> he will fuck you up. Don't reactivate the Old Head. Yeah, ask your mom about him. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, ask your mom about the Abortions. <laughs> your brothers and sisters that probably your brothers and sisters. That was your step pop before. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 1992. Man. Anyway, 1992 in theaters. In, in theaters, Labor Day weekend, and the other thing, which is a whole nother vibration. I have to tell y'all because I have to. The most important album I've ever done and created in my life. Twenty songs. Produced by the legendary, executive produced by the legendary David Foster. Mm -hmm. Today, mm -hmm. I don't know when this is going to air, but my mama's song dedicated to my mom is called Wildflower. It's available, just got released on all platinum, platinum uh, 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 streaming, I'm sorry, on all, it's platinum, uh, all right. streaming platforms. Yeah. Uh, we told a lot of good stories about Mama Priscilla. My mom's yes. passed mm -hmm. two years ago, 2022. Uh, to hear that, and, and, and so the song, bless you, brother. Mm -hmm. uh, the song is called Wildflower. And uh, let her cry, oh, she's a lady. So uh, the song is called Wildflower. And people don't know this, but David Foster was actually in a singing group, an R&B group. He's Canadian. He's a white man. He's Canadian from Canada. And he was in a group called Skylark. Mm -hmm. And they released the song Wildflower 50 years ago. And now, now they only don't produce And the reason we know the song Wildflower is because the group New Birth. Yes. Yes. New Birth, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so David Foster, there's been all of these remakes and remixes of Wildflower, but David Foster has never gotten in the studio to produce or co-produce any other version of Wildflower before Except now. Yeah. So shout out to Brandon Bam Hodge, Genius, my brother. Shout out to David Foster. Now I want to tell y'all in closing. Uh, first of all, y'all got a lot of choices of people to love and support. I have no idea why y'all have still made me a choice after all these years. I've never cared about who's relevant, irrelevant. I've never been irrelevant to me because I can't believe my life. So of all of the choices that y'all have made, go to the movies, even if you online trolling, talking, I'm just grateful. Bottom of my heart, can't believe my life. I woke up one day after wanting to be married for the rest of my days on this earth. Never cheated, no side chick, no abortions, no, no DMs. I was fully, fully married 
Uh, I was with this woman for five years and she woke up one day and I still don't know why to this day, she decided she don't want to be married no more. And I went to the studio and ended up creating an album called Beautiful Pain. Now for all of you 16 year olds with turquoise hair and black fingernails and out here trying to figure out a way to go viral from your corny ass TikTok dances, it's a grown man album. It's grown Every married couple out there I praise God for every marriage that's been re-sparked because of this album. Y'all may not know this, but there was never a such thing as Luther Vandross featuring Curtis Blow. Marvin Gaye never did a record with Run DMC. Mm. R&B soul singers went to the studio and they respect the culture. They really, really did this thing for real. They was willing to be scared. They was willing to tell you, I'm sorry, I miss you, I love you, I fucked up. I apologize, and they will definitely help you to get some of the greatest vaginal activity <laughs> of all time. The reason why we can't, we grown. The reason we can't listen to all that goofy ass <laughs> releasing right now, because the moment that auto tune come through my speaker, the vibes is fucked. Up. I need to go ahead and put some real goddamn R&B soul music on so I can get some pussy. I'm trying to like feel it. I can't get no pussy that. What the f*** is this? Little Tay Tay feature, about, little Say Say, little Kick Kick. What about, what about, this R&B album? Uh. Listen, man, I know we love to throw back to songs in the key of life. Mm -hmm. I know we can't get past I all can't the get past Delphonics. Okay. If I had a dime for every time I dreamed about you, dreamed about you. Come on, man. Real <laughs> sh Guess what? These is in radio. They got a podcast. I promise. I, I got some bad news for y'all. Most of the niggas they interview, they don't listen to y'all on their private time. I've never pulled up on Snoop Dogg in my life and not heard him playing real R&B classics. Mm -hmm. When you grown and you gotta be a part of the culture of hip hop, we gotta, we gotta interview all y'all niggas with 30 chains on and 20 outside, goons, and y'all out here creating gangster when you're not gangster at all. Out here. We know what's going on. What's creating Y'all can show gangster? up with 30 what's, what's don't create, make you a gangster. What's creating gangster? That's interesting. I I'm like going to tell you what's creating gangster. I mean, uh, uh, how you going to go viral? How you going to appear to be somebody in hip hop that matter if you don't show up looking like the package? Mm. It's mm. the package. The creative. They should start selling right? creative gangster packages. That's it. Get some tattoos. How much? <laughs> get some tattoos, show over 30, some beards. Go ahead and get your fake chains and pull up with five goddamn. You can't afford none of that shit. Okay? Y'all run around talking about MC Hammer. He actually had the bag. Y'all out here 30 deep and kick. It, you seen the interview with Snoop talk about a billion stream? That's $1,500. <laughs> That's bad. It's crazy. You ain't got it. You ain't selling them kind of records to be out here 30 deep. Okay, so with that being said, if you grown, you engaged, you been married, as much as I woke up to the most painful news of my life that she didn't want to be married no more and I was able to fall in love again. Shout out to my lady Zelly. I'm coming up on four years. I ain't never cheated. You ain't never cheated. We've been doing this. I don't even know where you came from. My album is called Beautiful Pain because I woke up to the pain of the loss of my mama and my marriage and my family and then I was able to discover the beauty of my pain right. through my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ through the love of my life now in Zelly and just me really thinking like, wow, why does God have his hands on me through it all? Um, I got some unfortunate news for y'all to all the niggas out here still out here broke and fucked up the way I've been most of my life before I got on. Uh, money ain't never stopped a nigga from committing suicide. Mm -hmm. The square footage in that house 
ain't never told a nigga to put that gun away. Mm. You not knowing God and Jesus and having some type of spiritual foundation ain't never stopped you from popping your head off and slicing your wrist and jumping off that building. Mm. Uh, the mental, emotional, and psychological warfare that we got to navigate through every single day is hard as a out here, period. Mm -hmm. and, and most of us have mastered the art of deception. We know how to put a filter on it. We know how to cut and paste it, put it up on the timeline. We know how to convince you that our life is what it's not. Mm -hmm. So when a nigga kill himself, or when a nigga jump off that build, building, and, and when he just decide I'm done, I can't take it no more, some end up doing some dumb shit to go to jail because they feel safer in jail than they do on the streets. Y'all will never understand what you don't understand about getting through this level of trauma every 24 hours, seven days a week. So I have to tell y'all, this Beautiful Pain album is the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Uh, you go to Tyrese.tv, I don't care about no record sales. I don't care about no money. I actually don't give a fuck about anything over than being real and saying, oh, shit, man. I mean, think about this for a second. And nobody would ever say this. Uh, <laughs> you love me already. I don't have to release another album to matter in music. Did I just say that? I make over $250,000 a night for an hour on stage, and I ain't dropped an album in 10 years. I, mm. make, more, I make more money than every opening for me, and they, just, they on the charts now. Mm. I went in the studio after going through some real shit, and, and, and I don't like the fact that I'm divorced. I don't like the fact that any of that shit happened. But when you hear Wildflower, my mama's dead in the box. I ain't doing this shit for no money. There's so many of y'all f***ing up R&B right now. Mm. This album is going to be the album that, that, that reminds y'all what y'all going to pull them instruments back out. Mm. Y'all going to start writing little real song. You should be ashamed of yourself with them goddamn lyrics in that notepad. Open up the door. Open up the door. Open up the door. Open up the door. Cut and paste in that. <laughs> what the f***? Is that song? I feel close to retarded listening to this out here on the radio. I'm tired. When you listen to this album, it's the only album that belongs on vinyl. You go to Tyrese.tv. The album and the movie 1992 is both dropping on Friday, August 30th, Labor Day weekend. I got the soundtrack to your life. Mm. And there's 20 songs mm. live. Tyrese.tv, the only way you can get it. I couldn't even get a record deal because of how real my album is. I just signed my deal last week. I've been out of a deal for over two years. Mm. Nobody would sign me because my album got nothing to do with all this gorny ass going on out here. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, as established as I am in R&B, mm -hmm. fan base, arenas, and everything I just mentioned. I, some of y'all fragile gonna be insecure about my facts. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I don't have to release another album to sell out an arena. I don't have to drop an album every year to headline. Mm. While y'all out here trying to convince everybody to be single, fuck men, fuck women, I'd rather <laughs> go home to a poodle and a vibrator every night because I don't need a man, I don't need nothing, nah, nah, nah. listen man, Jay-Z is still very married to Beyonce. Mm. Beyonce is still very married to Jay-Z. Mm. None of y'all gonna convince them to do it any other way. Mm. I know what the arena and SZA and Summer Walker and Jasmine Sullivan and all of the women out here that keep selling them records, talking about the breakups and the divorce and the cheating and fuck that and blah, blah, blah. Nobody wants to be alone. Mm. I'm a grown man. Mm. If I ended up being alone after my divorce, I don't even know if I'd still be here. Mm. It's not in everybody's cause to be alone after a nasty breakup. Mm. And you ain't gotta get to a point of, I'm fully, fully healed. I've fully, fully taken my spiritual journey. You wouldn't heal before your husband. Mm. You, ain't, you ain't had your shit figured out before you got married. Mm. We all up. Mm. 
we all look at our mom and our daddy and the house and the environment and the version of love that we was exposed to our whole life and we end up growing up to date somebody that reminds us of our mama. She dysfunctional as a Why I keep attracting all of these dysfunctional women? You're attracting your mama. Uh. <laughs> you're attracting your father. Why are you dating a deadbeat? Because you was raised by a deadbeat. Your father wasn't there, so you're gonna be with a man that reminds you of the vibrations. It's all, so the definition of breaking the cycle is my mama was an alcoholic. That's probably why I don't drink. I was raised in an environment with no father. That's why I love my daughters. I'm 15 million into a relationship with my two daughters. Mm. These family law court systems been f***ing me up. Mm. 15 million. Do you love your daughters that much? Mm. How many lawyers are you willing to burn through to make sure that these baby mamas who hate your guts don't block the access that you had to your kid? Mm. You love your kid that much? Mm. You willing to put a million up to fight for your relationship with yours? Mm. Don't play games with me, bruh. I'm a grown man. Listen. Beautiful pain, 1992, Labor Day weekend. August 30th. August 30th, Friday, mm. August 30th. Mm. And the proudest thing I'm gonna say to you black man, and you black man, is that throughout all the baby mama drama and all the shit that I've dealt with my whole life, I had problems while my baby was in the stomach, nigga. My two daughters have never called me Tyrese. I'm dad mm. in my house. Mm. I'm their father. Mm. So mama gonna say whatever she gonna say. Mm. In this house right here, and they don't make me a daddy because of the square footage or what's in the driveway. Mm. They good. My daughter don't even know what it's like to be in the kitchen. Mm. Been private chefs and butlers and nannies the whole time. Mm. I earned that. In this house right here, and I'm on flights every day. In this house right here to my daughters, I'm daddy. I'm their father. And if it ends tomorrow for me, that is my greatest accomplishment that I did better than my father. Y'all grow up on that. Mm -hmm. Y'all go in and keep trying to impress all them goofy in your hood all you want. They'll never put money on your books. Mm -hmm. They're never coming to see you because they record is more fucked up than yours. Mm -hmm. They never gonna take your collect call, mm. and they gonna be f***ing your baby mama while you locked up when they supposed to be holding her together. Mm. Go ahead and keep going out your way to prove sh to a bunch of that don't matter. I know what the f*** that is. That's why I'm praising this man for the choice. Because we know that there's choices, and when God puts something inside of you and say, I know what I want to do. I know what my inst. I know what the the hood that taught me and raised me to. Listen, man, it would mean the world to me. I got no pride, no. It would mean the absolute world to me to have my album "Beautiful Pain" to be number one, because this game gonna stay fucked up until we support real music. Mm. Until we start showing up for real movies, they are gonna keep making all this goofy. Mm. The reason that they keep making slave movies because y'all is putting Oscars in their hands every time they highlight another slave movie as if black people ain't got any other story. Y'all want to go back 200, 450 years as if we ain't living real here every day. Mm -hmm. 1992 mm. happened in 92, okay. April 29th. And that's a part of real history that happened. And I was there looting and rioting. And shout out, to, shout out to Dr. Dre for uh, song number four, The Chronic, The Day The Took Over. Wow. That's the name of the song. When it come on, it got actual, you know, uh, brothers talking that's on the ground doing their thing. Talking about, you know, as soon as the song come on, The Day The Come On, The Day The Took Over. People don't know that uh, The Chronic came out in 92. December One, 92. Two, three into the December four. December 92. They don't know. Snoop Dogg was just like me in Long Beach. He was looting, rioting, protesting. He was out there. He told me. I was like, damn, 
He was like, yeah. They was going back and forth to the studio, Dre uh -huh. said. As they was looting them, like going outside, so the coming back. Snoop Dogg is a producer on the movie 1992. Mm -hmm. The fact that I was in that for real, and now 30 years later, I'm starring in this movie. Man, God has a sense of humor, man. Uh, in closing, because my PR people is rushing me, and I'm sorry for being late, but this is what happens when real conversation. I also understand my stage and platform, and, and who am I to not want to inspire all these people out here when we're running out of people to look up to? Mm -hmm. uh, I just have to tell y'all, man, stay encouraged. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, invite him into your most vulnerable and intimate spaces. It may be Allah for you. It may be you got to do something that's bigger than you because you ain't going to be able to get through that shit by yourself. I don't care how long ago it was or what just recently happened. My therapist has taught me, stay committed to doing the best you can with every 24 hours you get. Don't worry about next week. Don't worry about how you had a vision and a plan. It was supposed to happen when, where, how. God will somehow throw a whole monkey wrench in your whole situation and have you confused like, what, bro, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm about to release an album that I wanted everybody else to release but me. Y'all know what that's like to be in the f studio singing these words and these lyrics like, what the f am I singing yes. about? Mm -hmm. Bro, you went from daddy mm -hmm. at home with your son mm -hmm. to now, what? Mm -hmm. not comparing, no, what am I talking about? Mm -hmm. What is going on? Yeah. Why? All in my Instagram, my timeline. What the f like is this? A you didn't even have an opportunity to process your own loss what? because as soon as the loss happened, everybody in the world was on your line mm -hmm. and got in the way of you just wanting to sit still and pause and process. Like, what the f is happening? Right. I'm in the studio recording an album about my mama. What do you mean, my mama ain't like? What do you mean, I'm a father, motherless child? What do you mean, I can't call my mama and say happy Mother's Day? What do you mean? What do you mean Happy Father's Day got me thinking about my son? Uh -huh. And I know what my son and I would be doing and talking about and moments we'd be having. Man, last Father's Day, we was just, uh -huh. it's real shit going on out here. Y'all stay encouraged and understand, don't, 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 don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing the best you can, but stop playing with your life. And stop thinking and believing that because you was born in this, that you are this. Stop convincing yourself that, hey man, fuck my mama from here, my daddy from here. I was a, I was a broke heir, turned coin heir, turned dollar heir, turned millionaire. I got one more spot to go. You under dig me? I seen death. I, I had every reason in the world to not be here. Mm. Love who you love, support who you support. I may not be your favorite. I'm God's favorite. Mm. And I'm not going nowhere. And I'm running my race. I'm not losing no sleep over who you who you dating, your house, your car, your drive, your jewelry. Uh, I can't believe these my songs. I can't believe I got 10 billion in the box office. I, I gotta tell y'all something that's a little scary. Uh, I'm gonna live and die, no time soon, God, God forbid. I'm gonna live and die, never be able to meet every fan of Tyrese around the world. I release movies in over 200 languages. Mm. Mm. God is good. My mama gave birth to a giant. Mm. And every single day I'm waking up just trying to figure out, wow, God, what else do you have in mind for me? And how do I, figure out how to be something that I never thought I would be, which is what I explained about the movie set. How do I figure out mm -hmm. how to, okay, God, I'm dreaming with my eyes open, but how do I, how, what do I do with something that I never asked for? What do I do with where I'm going? Like, boom, you know, your jacket just gets snapped. Oh, okay. That's how it happens. I love y'all, man. They, they are killing me mm -hmm. because I'm killing them with my hey, overtime. Man. I'm sorry. Hey, man. Appreciate you, man. The legend. Worth a game, the baby. legend.
Hey, Movie man. in theaters. Y'all, August y'all doing 30th. the right thing supporting these real ones right yes. here, man. Album hey, y'all out. saving lives. August 30th. Tyrese.tv. Tyrese.tv. Break your site. Break the site. That they double vinyl that. gonna be at your front door, baby. Yes, double sir. vinyl. 20 yes, songs. Sir. Y'all 20 can stream songs. it if you want, but f you. <laughs> Order that album. Vinyl. The only RB soul album that belong on vinyl. I love the throwbacks. The game had to change. Shout out to all of the real music songwriters and everybody that showed up for my album and my music. Let's August get it. 30th. It's no skips, nigga. August 30th. No skips. Bring that real R&B back. No skips. That baby making music. If y'all make sure that this album is number one, they gonna have to put auto tune. They gonna have to rest in peace that. Uh. They gonna have to put them goddamn beats down that they making on the iPhone. Lil Tay Tay, you gonna have to rest for a little bit. That's just a little bit. Yeah, we bringing it back to number one. It's just like that. Right.